Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well today we're going to build this beautiful little blog post carousel that we've got going on here. We're going to be using the plugin from Divi Gear. It's called Divi Blog Carousel Module. And you can download it from my affiliate link below this video. Really easy to do and it's a nice little feature to have on your site here. So let's get started. Once you've got the plugin downloaded and installed and activated, let's go ahead and enable our visual builder so we can build on the front end. Once the build is loaded, let's go down to where we want to work. What I'll do is I'll completely get rid of this whole section here. I'll just trash it. And I'll add a new section. Little blue button to add a section here. Inside, I'm going to put a I'm going to choose a regular section. I'm going to have one row, one column. Now, inside my row, I'm going to insert our Divi blog carousel, which is right here. Once you've got the plugin activated and installed, it'll appear in your modules panel here. So I'm going to just left click to install it. Now, of course, you've got to have blog posts on your site for this to work obviously and I've got plenty of posts and uh, they've all got featured image etc so um, if you don't have blog posts on your site already put some up there because this won't work if you haven't got any blog posts obviously okay so I've got that there by default it's coming as it normally has there number of posts count we're on the content here 12 recent posts. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my row full width like I did in the one earlier. So I'm just going to close this down. I'm going to go to the row module, which is the green one here. Blue for a section, green for a row, dark gray for a module. Of course, I'm using the fantastic Divi theme here with the Divi Builder. If you want to take that for a test drive, you can do so from my affiliate link below this video also. So let's hit the cog on the row. And I'm going to make it full width by going to the design tab to sizing. Slide the width slider all the way up to 100%. I'm going to copy that 100%, control C. Paste it down below in the max width box. And as you can see, our row is now full width. What I want to do, because it's sort of sticking out the end there a little bit, I'm going to put a bit of padding on there. So we've got a bit of space either side. So let's do that. Again, on the design tab, I'll shut up the sizing, go to the spacing just underneath, and I'll use padding. Let's give it, say, 20 pixels either side. Just put in 20, it'll put in the PX for you. Hit the little chain link, and it'll do the opposite side. Fantastic. Okay, while we're out of this actual section here, what I'm gonna do is copy my row colors from above here simply going to go onto this top row right click on the blue tab right click i'm going to say copy section styles i'm going to go back down to our section with our blog post in there blue tag right click and i'm going to paste section styles there we go so i've got the background color i want there Fantastic. Now let's go back into our blog module. And blog post count 12, that's fine. Recent posts, that's fine. Newest to oldest. I'm on the content tab, as you can see. Blog offset, that's no problem. So that's all good. Let's go down. Elements. Featured image, that's great. Show excerpt, that's this little part right here. You can change the number of letters that you can show here that way. Now show categories, that's fine. Show author, that's fine. Show date, I'll leave that there. This is all this metadata that's a little bit lost in there with the color, but we'll fix that in a minute. Show common count, I don't want that on. Let's put a read more button in there. I'll flip that to yes. Default, it is actually there. It's hard to see the pink on pink, but I'll change that in a minute. 
You can change the text from read more here to anything else you want. Now in the Carol cell settings, let's click on that. We're on a desktop here and it gives you the option to show on different things. I want on huge screens, I want about six and on large desktops, I want six as well. So let's change the amount that we've got here, six. And on our desktop that we're looking at here, let's make that six. On tablet, let's say three. And on mobile phones, that's one. So that's great. As you can see, I've got six there. That's just what I want. Multi slide. What that's going to do if you check that on, it's going to move this whole row every time. Instead of just moving one incrementally at a time, it'll move the whole row. So I'm going to leave that off. Spacing is set to 30 at the moment. That's absolutely fine. Transition duration is half a second, 500 milliseconds is by default. I'm going to leave that. Don't think I want arrow navigation. That's a left and right arrow to stop and increment left or right. I am going to have dot navigation. And as you can see, when I click that, it appeared. If I move this out, it's right there. Center slide. I don't need that. That's for when we turn this into a 3D slider. We'll do that in another video. I do want it to loop. In other words, go around and around when it gets to the end of the post, it'll start them up again. I do want it to auto play, so it just plays automatically without having to do anything. I guess I'll put pause on hover on. If somebody sees something they like, they can put their mouse on here and it'll pause so they can read the snippet easier. They've got an auto play delay that'll let everything load of uh, 1500 milliseconds there. That's absolutely fine. What I will do is I'm gonna check the equal height here if I go down to the background and put in a background color, I used a very sort of ugly orangey purpley sort of thing earlier on. I can't remember. I think it might have been that. Well, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> and as you can see, they're not equal heights there. If we go back up to where I was just now, which was on the carousel settings here, equal height. Let's check that now. And as you can see, it's made all of them equal height, which is great. And we'll keep going down. Now slide effect is what we want going on here, which it's just going to slide across the screen. There's a, another one called cover flow that I'll be covering in a different video that we use for our sort of 3D effect. Background, well, we just put that in so you know what that is. Admin label, I don't need to do that because there's only one carousel slider on here. Let's start moving on to our design tab now. Image style. Well, to me, I think it's cutting off the left hand section of the image there. So let's have a look what our options are. We've got medium, we've got very large, and we've got default. I'm going to set mine to default. That's better. We've got our left hand side back on there now, and the images are actually fitting within the space provided. I don't want to have any rounded corners or borders on my images. Overlay styles, again, I don't need an overlay. An overlay is when you hover over it, a color will appear over it, but I really don't need that for this. Title, well, obviously that's our title. Let's centralize it. I'm gonna make it white. And I'm not gonna change anything else on there. I'm gonna add some padding to it in a little while to give it a bit of breathing space there. Metadata, this is the divi gear, the date, and the, the category right there. Let's go into there. You can have icons on there if you want to. If I flip that to on, you'll see when it loads. It's got these little icons right here. I don't particularly want that today, so I'm gonna leave that one off. I'm also gonna put meta position at the bottom, so I'm gonna click that to on. If you wanted a dividing line above the metadata, you could uh, give it a color right here. And as you can see, a little line appears. I really don't want that. You can change the font and the font weight and everything else here if you want to. I'm gonna centralize it. And I'm also gonna make it white, I think. 
There we go, fantastic. Now let's keep going down. The content, which is here. Again, you can change everything. I'm just going to centralize it. I'm going to make the text white. Going on down, the read more button. Here's our read more button. Okay, I want it to be centralized also. I also want it at the bottom, and I quite like to have it full width as well. So I've enabled that. And you can't see that it's full width because it hasn't got a background color. And I put it at the bottom, so it's just on top of our metadata there. If you want to use an icon, you can do this, and the elegant icons will pop up for you. I'm not going to use an icon. I'm going to give it a little white background there. There we are. And now you can see it's actually full width. In a moment, I'm going to just add a bit of space to give everything a bit of breathing space, so it'll look a bit more interesting. You can change your font styles and colors just like you can with everything else here. Next and previous button. Well, we don't have one of those, so I don't need to worry about that. The dots, let's make that, it's actually blue there at the moment. Let's use that crazy color that we just used for the other thing, which I think was that. That's fine. Border, do I want a border around it? I'll put one around it just so you can see. I don't want rounded corners. Let's give it one pix black. It's just to find it a, a little bit there. Custom spacing. Here's where I want to add a little bit of space between the image and the title. If you wanted to put it on the whole container with the image as well, you could add some here. Um, I don't need to do that. But the content, the content margin and padding we've got here. So let's give our content some padding. I just want to give it left and right, really. Say, let's try 10 pixels and see how that affects it. Mm, let's try 15. And I want it on the right as well. It's fine. Actually, that may be a little bit much. Take it back to 10. Because I've got it that checked, it'll do both at the same time. That's fine. I want to still want a bit more gap above the title there. So we've got our title title margin here, which is fine. So let's give it say 20 pixels on the top. Fantastic. That's dropped it down a little bit. That's about it, spacing wise. That metadata could do with a little bit more padding on the top. So it's got same top and bottom so here's our meta padding let's put say another five pixels on the top yeah that's just about right there fantastic sizing well we're pretty much got them just exactly how we want them so i'm not going to change that spacing's fine too let's give it a little bit of box shadow there we go it just makes it stand out against that background a little bit more Okay, I think we're done. Let's save our changes. And exit the Visual Builder. Save the page changes. Go up the top and exit the Visual Builder. Once it's loaded, let's go down to where we were working. And have a look at our little carousel. Here we go. And it's sliding along nicely. When we hover over it, it should stop. Great. And as you see, we've got different sized images here. And because we put the equal height on, it's still remaining the equal height, which is fantastic. Well, I guess we better check one and see if it's going to work. And there it is. Fantastic. Let's take a look. Let's go back. So there it is, that's how easy it is to create a blog post carousel using the fantastic blog carousel module from Divi Gear. Like I say, if you want to use it, you can download it from my affiliate link below this video. I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, share, comment, 
and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're interested in web design, take a look down below. We've got some great free courses down there, as well as some premium courses for our YouTube subscribers. So do check it out. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.